Diamond Dynasty has more content than ever on day one of MLB 23. And I'm not gonna lie, it could be very overwhelming. Today, I wanna simply explain to you how content works in Diamond Dynasty and give you a process on how to build your team. So without further ado, let's hop on into the Diamond Dynasty content. So first of all, we need to explain sets and seasons. If you don't understand the concept, every card will be labeled in a set. Most cards released during season one are gonna be set one cards, while a lot of cards will also be labeled as core cards. Core cards can be used all year. Cards of that individual set will only be usable for a limited time. So on this graphic, you see set one will eventually not be usable overall once July comes around. So this means eventually set one cards will basically be phased out of lineups. You see, you could use one player from that ineligible set as a wild card. You could change it whenever you want, but you can still use that one player you really like from a previous set. This changes the dynamic of Diamond Dynasty. As you see here, we have lots of 99 overalls and are not the hardest cards to earn ever some of them. And we'll be working towards getting these 99s and some of the other cards in the game throughout each set and then will they eventually phase out in July. And just to answer a couple quick things, no, your cards don't disappear. You could get most of the cards that are still available in certain programs after the fact. And there really isn't any harm to holding onto these cards to cover some of the core cards we have. First, we have our live series cards. These are just the low overall current players in the game game obviously they are not really that valuable so they're collection fodder you got to collect them for bigger cards and also use them in certain theme teams if i'm a yankee fan i need yankee cards to use for my yankee theme team and these guys could fill out some of those spots and of course the collections are also core cards so as you progressively collect teams as you collect the race get Carlos Pena. Not only is he a captain where you could use those live series cards, he is also a core card. And all of these collections are core cards. Most of them are mainly there for the theme team purpose. But on another note, they don't need to be used that way. They're good to collect because as you collect more and more teams, you'll get better and better cards. Like you collect the entire NL West, you get Fernando Valenzuela. And as you work your way to the NL, you can get 99 Sammy Sosa, who is arguably one of the best cards in the game right now. 99 Mark McGuire, another top card in the game right now. And then the man himself, Derek Jeter, who is going to be a great shortstop for the entire year. So you look at all this content and think about what their importance is. These core cards are valuable because you'll be working on them likely for the long run and you'll be able to use them for your entire year. And a few of these guys like Jeter, Sosa and McGuire are going to be very good cards to use for the entire year. There are some other core cards like the Negro League storylines. I truly recommend enjoying this mode for the storylines and the stuff themselves, but if you do play it, you will get 90 overall core cards. You eventually get a 95 overall captain card of Buck O'Neill. So it's like the live series cards, you get all of the smaller ones, you get the captain that'll also boost them up. So you definitely want to get these cards and give them a try if you're trying different theme teams. And finally, you'll see with a lot of the core cards in this mode, They'll be released during the seasons as normal, but they're labeled as core cards if they're that special series of card. For example, Derek Jeter here is a core card at an all-star card. A lot of cards of these series are going to stick as core cards because they are fit for certain theme teams. They aren't meant to be overpowered or like the main cards you used, just cards that you get that benefit of the boosts with. So the summary, what is a core card? Usually a lower overall, besides a few cards that you'll be working towards. And they are definitely gonna be usable for theme teams and boosting each other with other captain cards that we'll be talking about in a bit. And you'll be able to use all these cards all year, really, whenever you want. On the other hand, we have set one cards. And these are the cards, like I mentioned, that'll eventually expire in terms of being usable in ranks. If you're someone who is playing in the long term, there's gonna be a point where these cards aren't gonna all be in your lineup. So how do you get all of these cards? First of all, you have a season XP reward path and you can get some of those core cards like I mentioned. You play the game, you're gonna get XP and you will gradually get those core cards but also some more captain cards and then some charisma cards, which we'll also be talking about in a bit. So you playing the game is gonna give you some extra bonus cards to help you build your team with. There's also team affinity. This is definitely more of a precise grind. You could get these cards in theory quicker than those XP reward path cards. If you just go for an individual team you like, like I'm a Yankee fan, I can get a Captain Aaron Judge at a 92 overall. I can get a Charisma Giancarlo Stanton at 97 overall. And these cards are going to be definitely the go-to no money spent offline grinding cards because you could just grind against the CPU, do moments, do the showdown, do the mini season, and you could get these cards for absolutely free. And there's a lot of them. 
There are 30 captains, 30 charisma cards that are 97 overall, and then a bunch of lower overall cards you can use. There will also be other programs like we currently have with this WBC program where you complete missions and moments and conquests and stuff just like Team Affinity, you could get more cards like these WBC cards. So another great way to fill up your inventory with set one cards. And while these are gonna be the cards you mostly use on your team, you're gonna use that team to push forward a lot of the online content. You have three World Series awards and ranked seasons, three Battle Royale awards in BR, and then some event rewards that are gonna be pretty good as well. So basically, if you're playing the game, you're usually gonna be mixing in Team Affinity and also those other programs like the WBC program, building up a God Squad along with those core cards and working towards these big boy cards. And whether you wanna keep these cards or not, they are great cards and some of the best cards in the game. If you collect the cards in set one, you will eventually get more and more 99s, like a 99 Jazz Chisholm, 99 Trey Turner, and this set one collection pack which has 99 Babe Ruth, Pedro Martinez, and Chipper Jones. These three cards are definitely some of the best three cards in the game, along with those live series collections. So to summarize, you're gonna get the best of the best cards by collecting cards in the game. You'll probably get the next best set of cards by being good in online modes like Ranked Seasons or Battle Royale. So basically, you see the progression of the content, right? Usually the easier to obtain cards are gonna be lower overall, while the highest overall cards you're chasing for require a lot of collecting or to be very good at the game. So basically, you look at all of these cards and how this content will work here. We're chasing 99s by grinding the lower overall cards and building up the binder whether it's in the set collections or in the live series collections. Now that we know the process and what the goal of building our team is, what is the step-by-step -step process that we want to take ideally to get in that position? So you see I have a bronze team here. I can't hop on in the online and try to make World Series with this team. What I need to do is start building my team with good cards that I can use in online modes. And the beauty of this year is you have multiple options for that. For example, you have the World Baseball Classic program, which will give you a lot of cards. You have Team Affinity, which will give you more team-based cards, but will be a little bit more time. And then the normal things that we have each year, like mini seasons, the USA Conquest, and these individual things that'll give you some lower overall cards. So we wanna make our first goal to get an ideally all diamond team. What I will be doing first is the WBC program because I think it's gonna be the most efficient way to get cards. You know, I could start hopping online and playing events and working towards those cards. As you work through the program, you get a bunch of 97s and you get this choice pack, which could give you a 99 overall. So I wanna target this first to get a bunch of diamonds on the team. Then I'm gonna probably do team affinity by using some of those cards along with doing things like the showdown and the moments that don't require a good team. So I could start getting team affinity XP and earning more and more of these cards. This is gonna be a little bit more of a longer grind, but I wanna at least do this a bit till I have a good enough team. Then once I have that diamond team that I'm confident with, I wanna start earning stubs alongside of that. Obviously you earn stubs in other avenues like playing certain modes and all of that, but we wanna seek valuable awards online and then sell them while they're expensive. Especially if you're playing no money spent and you're trying to play this long-term grind of collecting cards. Yes, that Lou Gehrig, for example, is a great card, but while he's expensive, it's probably not worth it if you can use stubs towards these live series or set collections. So then once I have that good team, I will be playing ranked events, BR, and getting those big boy awards and trying to sell them. And that's just me trying to be a most efficient towards getting these collections and such. However, I should note, if you aren't trying to rush it, trying to take your time with these things or just trying to use the best team, or if you just don't like playing the online modes like this, it's perfectly okay to get into whichever mode you like with that good team and start grinding out more binder content like the USA Conquest, finish up grinding Team Affinity, try to get all of the cards. And we're gonna use those stubs and not buy the packs that exist in the market these diamond duos are good headliners that are good uses. They're a bit expensive. I don't think you wanna pay a certain amount of stubs to get a 99 to use for such a temporary bit. However, there will be certain times where that price is probably pretty fair. But do you wanna pay 150K for Mike Trout right now? Or would you have more value spending those stubs, getting a bunch of collections done so you could eventually get that Derek Jeter, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa. Build up the binder and go towards those 99s that are great there and work your way towards those cards since they will give you the most long-term benefit. But the beauty of this game right now is there are a lot of 99s. You get them in different ways. 
If you want to spend the stubs and get that 99 like that Cattel Marte right now, it really doesn't cause any harm because that is a great card to use right now still. And you'll still be able to use him technically after set one. You could build your team however you want. I just think that way is going to be the best way for the long run for this year. Make sure you sub to the channel over here because I'll be reviewing, recommending, and giving tips on all of this content in Diamond Dynasty this year. And make sure you sub to my main channel as well. I'll be doing all my gameplay content, including gameplays with a lot of these cards over there so make sure you sub to both this channel and that one there good luck in your diamond dynasty endeavors i'm excited for another big year and i'll see you all again on the next video this week